Hello and welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today we're swinging into... Our very first gameplay of the Screaming Antelope. This is going to be the Screaming Antelope level 1 in our Kingdom Death campaign. Yes, we are back at it now that we have settled into our house and have gotten pretty much the yeah. studio and some of our calyxes set up. Still work in progress, so bear with, but... Now, if you're curious, we're, we might do a higher end version of this down the road, but for now we're taking the approach that producing content is better than not is better than not producing content because I've spent way too long not producing content and we're also taking the approach that there's no way this series could be made without the support of our Patreon community. Yeah, so... It's just the reality of it. So check out the Patreon because actually all of the in-between episodes, besides for the very first fight of each new encount each new animal, yep. um, each new being, Besides for the very first the name of the game's monster, so besides for the very first monster, the, all the rest of the in-between episodes as we gear up and do their other levels are all over on Patreon. Yeah, so we have White Lion White Lion Level One, which happened just a bit ago. We have a White Lion Level One fight between then and now, and this is our Antelope Level One. Basically, yep. all the highlights are going to be here for people who want to see what's new, what's going on with Kingdom Death, re-experience some of the showdowns. For those of you that are massive Kingdom Death fans and massive fans of what we're producing, please recognize every episode of this series takes anywhere from six to eight hours to produce. And in order to make that possible and for us to do a full 30 episode campaign... At least, you said it goes up to 60. Uh, 60 hours. Oh. Yeah. In order for us to do a full campaign, we couldn't justify it here on, on YouTube. The reality yeah. is, by the end of 10 or 15 episodes, we'd probably be getting two or 300 views a showing. We've seen it happen on other channels. That works if those two or 300 views are people that support us on Patreon. It doesn't work if it's draining the life out of a YouTube channel. So with that being said, we are fighting the Antelope level one. Do you want to establish some of the flavor text here? Oh no, I was gonna go dive in. Oh, but find out who we're going after. A screaming antelope. Right there. Okay. There once was a fearsome monster that was trained by the hand to be a steed for the goblin. However, upon smelling its new master, the mo monster's mind shattered and ran into the unknown, foaming at the mouth and biting the noses off the stone-faced floor. Its instinct is to graze. The monster moves. Where is the it's card? Ability. That's its ability. Is this the card? Yeah. Why did you take out one AI? Ah, that is not an AI. That is a trait. It's you see, as we advance, AI on it. it is as we advance in character levels. Every creature, it, this right? is a personalized deck, and this has a personalized trait. You want to go ahead and read what the antelope does? Where's his regular stats? I just want to see. Okay. Six and eight, just like the white lion. Ah, <sighs> trait. When the monster collides with a the survivor, they suffer damage equal to the monster's level to a random hit location. So instead of just getting knocked down, we're now being stomped. Collided. On. Yeah. Okay. All right, we need to go hunting this beast, and then we need to... Uh, Would you like to go first? Sure. Sure, I'll slide forward I here. Now, very well last time. for those of you that are watching, we're moving out with Burgundy, Amber... Blue and Ash. Blue and Ash. In the last uh, White Lion hunt, we actually got some resources. I was able to upgrade, upgrade and grab the Catgut Blow and a full or near full set of Rawhide Armor, along with making Burgundy ambidextrous, which means we're running with double double Founding Stones. <laughs> and what, what updates do you have? Um, I have a full Rawhide Armor for Ash, in addition to my Bone Club, and then Blue here has two Katars on either hand, and it has a Founding Stone as a backup. Just in case. Just in case something happens to Monster Grease and a Helm. The last person that went out with a single Katar got their back broken, so, yeah. all right. I'm stepping forward, flip this car, Carpet of Ticks. Mm. Lovely, mean. right? Uh, the ground is covered with a carpet of huge, writhing ticks. Each survivor must try to fend off the swarm. Roll 1d10 and add your hunt experience to the result. On a result of 6+, plus. okay, so we all have, we're all rolling. And I believe everyone is at hunt experience level 2, except you, level I have three. 3. So, 12, 11, 6, Four, five, six, seven. On a six plus, you successfully smash the ticks away in a shower of gore. Do we get anything? Beautiful. We don't. I don't believe so. Mm. Otherwise, yep, nothing. Okay. Here, we're going to be rolling in the book. Who wants to take a step forward? Blue. Roll 2d10 for me, please. Mm. Always dangerous. Always dangerous. High numbers. High numbers, please. There we go. What is that? A crit. A lantern! Do you do you remember how you roll 2d10? No. 
high and low. So 60 would be your number. We really should technically do two different colors of dice though. That's what the two different colors are for. Because mm. we're, we're rolling them as D100s. So. You said you roll two D10s. Close enough. Wildfire, a massive wall of flame obstructs the survivors, incinerating the ground. It has destroyed whatever awaited the survivors and left chaos in its wake. Archive all hunt event cards in the next two hunt spaces. Place two basic hunt event cards in those spaces. So this one's gone. Okay, moving forward. Uh, I'll take a step forward. Okay. I'm going to roll 2d10. You want to look up my number here? Mm-hmm. So white is the high. 95, please. Wow. Hey, I'll find it. She'll find it, folks. Mm, okay. Grim and frostbitten. There is dead stillness in the air. The atmosphere becomes thick with worry and the survivors carry on nervously. A bitter, evil cold sets in and there is no shelter. The survivors huddle together for warmth, shivering loudly. Unless a survivor has armored gear at each hit location, they lose quarry monster level survivor. Survival. Okay. So everyone, except for Four. you, and you, actually, I'm fine here. Do you have at one on every hit location? I got the cloth. I'm rawhide everywhere except the cloth because I like the breeze. Mm. <laughs> cool. So what, what do we lose? What's quarry Just, monster level survivor? So we're hunting this creature. It's a monster level one. So everyone's going to lose one survival. Mm. So except Burgundy is dropping out of two. Blue is dropping down. Blue is dropping one. out of one. Mm, it's too bad. Now, you could have actually given before we left, and I should have told you this. You could have given your stone nose over here to blue since blue wasn't leaving with full survival already. Which means mm. when you arrive, although you're giving up insanity and you kind of like insanity for your character, so that's your call. Why would I be giving up insanity? Because it also gives you insanity when you arrive. I already have three insanity. Okay. You can go as high as you want. So. You get the benefit when you left. Did you mark that? What? So read your... Uh, read your disorder or your ability the quixotic no read read your ability which one the one that gives you if you're insane um this yeah. if you are insane when you depart gain plus one survival and plus one strength did you mark that down i can't because i already hit max survival but you get the plus one strength right i did mark it down okay so cool I, i'll keep the stone nose over here okay sounds good we are catching up with the antelope we are going to be hunting the antelope officially or fighting it officially what's that card down there which one? That's one that if we made it that far, we would have had it. Because mm. the antelope can back up? The antelope can back up, yeah. The antelope can run away from us. Mm. Doesn't want to be hunted. Here you are. Stick that in that deck over there. The hit look, the, which one? The one that matches the back. Okay. Okay. Antelope gets set up here. What is our middle. terrain? Well, I already pulled our terrain. We always start with three acanthus and a bug patch. And then I drew That's these a two. Face. Not a bug patch. Uh, close enough. Bug patches over there. I drew these two, and there's a few special setup rules. Mm. You're going to be in the way when I open the book. Mm. That's why I set them over there. Okay. Showdown with the antelope. Three acanthus set up in the green area. Uh, so, bug patch sets up outside of here. Two spaces in, one, two, and one, yep, right like this. Campus are set up, spread out all around in here. Do they have any random rules? Set up at least six spaces away from other acanthus spot plants. So I'm not entirely sure with this setup that it is possible. One, two, three, four. But there's restrictions on how far out where they have to be set up, so. We'll spread them out like that, and then set up the last two locations, please. The stone face has to be set up five spaces away from board edges. I'll set them up right here. And the bug pillar set up adjacent to the monster. Oh, no. That one has a specific spot. Oh. So just the stone face and the pillar. Set up five spaces away from the monster. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. And we start. What does it give us? Walks their field of view, impassable. We start anywhere on the outer edge. Edge. So you okay. can start over there, but we might want to start on the same edge. Okay, move me over. So we can move in together. So we have acanthus. 
Got a giant stone face. Got a pillar. Got a bug patch. Okay. okay. This is going to be a normal fight because we didn't ambush it or shock it or anything. So go ahead and draw a AI card. Let's start the fight. Pick target in blind spot. <laughs> this one picks the ones in the blind spot. Certainly can. Evil. In range, closest threat in range, no target, graze. We are grazing. Okay. Uh, the monster full moves to its closest acanthus plant and ends its turn. Uh, if the monster is on or adjacent to an acanthus plant, archive the train and heal one uh, Heal one wound. If there are no acanthus plants on the showdown board, instead full move forward in a straight line. Just starts eating. So it's got one, two, three, four, five more wound healings. Unless we pick the acanthus plants. Okay. Roll one d10 if you have a sickle. You instead roll two yeah. d10. We you can go pick the acanthus plants, which is something okay. we might want to do because grazing's a terrible thing. Yeah, I see yeah. that. All right, rush forward. Okay, who who wants to move? One, two, three, four. None of us are gonna reach anything, so just move them all forward. I have a bow though. A bow is cumbersome. Range six. Nope. Okay. Keep moving? Yep. Just move us all forward. Now, my ranged is not going to be able to move work. Move us down. Have us all start at one down. More. Okay. My range is not going to be able to work, sadly. We don't have dash. We do have surge. Make sure surge is marked on here. That's what you selected no. last time. No, I marked dash. No. I did. We took surge. I marked dash. We don't have dash. Are you sure? Positive. We can check our sheet, but we don't have dash. Dash. Inner, la inner lantern is not dash. Inner lantern is surge. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Stop chewing on that eraser. I don't think it is. Can you pull it out? I can pull it out. I remember, because I said one gives you an attack, one gives you a movement, and you said I would love the attack. attack. Inner Lantern is going to be Surge. Cool. Okay. All right. Surge. And Surge. Um, so, if... If I'm not using my action, I'm gonna do this with my rawhide headband. Do you have your setup that you can use? I it? have a rawhide headband as well. So reveal the top two AI and place them. Although back. it won't, it won't help because we both would be revealing the same. But reveal the top two AI and place them back in any order. So we can control what it's doing next. Okay. Do we want it to slam or ram? Farthest threat in range. Do this one because this one has a after hit. Okay. So slam on top. Okay. Uh. And we can determine who it's going to target as well, really. I don't think I have anything else that gives me a... Uh, anything, any action. Straight ability, no. Yeah, I figured... Oh! Spend yeah. this to you sling the stone from anywhere on the board. You could throw it, but those are pretty valuable. They're not usually the best things to spend. Archive this card for one automatic yeah. hit. Okay. Usually, usually not the thing that you'd spend immediately. Yeah. Okay, so draw another AI card, which we know what's going to be this time. Yes, we do. All right, slam. Pick target. Closest knockdown. Furthest threat in field of view in range. Any of us. Any of us. So I'll take Munster Controller. Okay. With Amber. With the duck on right you. There. Um, no, farthest threat would actually be one over. So I'll take it with uh, Burgundy. I could take it with Ash. I'll do it with Burgundy. Okay. Um, one, speed of one, accuracy of two, one damage. Speed of one. Accuracy of two, no evasion over here. Oh wait, I do have evasion. <coughs> Accuracy of three. One, three plus. Five. It's going to be a hit. You said one damage. Mm -hmm. One damage to a single location, one damage to my foot. I will take it. Okay. Now we all move. Yes, now we actually get to do some damage. So what mean by its butt? Uh it would be better. For there's a chance we hit it and it runs. You still wanna go by its butt? No, then it tramples me. And collides. Should I take out that should huh. I start We actually should have done it the other way. We should have moved it to you. 
Why? I also gain a benefit from my stone nose. Why? Up to three. Should we move it towards me? Because you have the club. Yeah. You can't move. Oh. And use the correct. club. Correct. So. And I have no other weapon. You have no other weapon. So we should have moved it to you. And we could have selected there. Okay. Right? Because what's the text say? Farthest threat in field of view in range. So any of us would have been profitable. So go ahead and do that. Uh, and you take the damage on your foot. Okay. Because let's resolve your... Well, I have... <coughs> How much did you roll for? Because I have different stats. You do. You want to re-roll it? Yeah. Okay. Re-roll it. Attacking. One. Three. Which is going to be a miss. Because I have... Which strength? How many evasion do you have? Not strength. I have two evasion. <coughs> yeah, so four. Okay, now. Now I hit. Bone club it. All right, two, six. I have my strength, my accuracy. Mm -hmm. So two of these. My accuracy is one, so I need hits on a five plus. Yeah. What were you about to say? Nothing. I still have to do the math each time. Two hits. Draw who two hit locations. Are there traps in this one too? Oh yes. Restless Shank. Is that a regular card? Yep. I'm not used to the backgrounds. And Restless Hoof. Restless Hoof. Which one do you want to target first? Um, the wound. Shank. Do you? Well, I don't want to fail. Yeah, the wound's gonna happen if you hit it. Your odds to hit it versus your odds to fail are higher. Okay. Because it has a defense of eight. I have. Hit a five. I have five plus two strength, seven. So I need one. So I, I, I wound everything. One would be a fail, period. Why? One is always a fail. Even though I have... Okay, There's fine. There's no circumstance where one is not a fail. Fine. So <coughs> which one do you think I should do the hoof first? Yep. Okay. So I just need anything higher than a one. Anything higher than a one. Four, okay. yours. Now the wound. Because the odds are you're going to hit it. Okay, second, and you don't have lucky on anything, do you? Mm, no, it's nope. just cumbersome. All right, cycle a card, and roll 1d10 for each survivor currently in the monster's blind spot. No one's in the blind spot. Great. <clears throat> it would have kicked backwards. Don't like this monster. Okay. That was Ash. Um, Let me go ahead and mess. I'm going to shoot my cut, okay. cat gut bow. Can you shoot from being that close? I can. Okay. With my claw head arrow. arrow. So, claw head arrow is actually going to flip because I'm using it. Okay. It's a one-time use. It's a one-time use, but here's the cool thing. I use the new stats on it, so one die hitting on a six plus. Mm -hmm. No accuracy bonus, sadly, but I guarantee basically a wound as long as I hit because it's six, it's six strength plus my four strength. One plus is cleaning it, mm -hmm. and if I hit it, I'm going to be able to give it minus one evasion, which means everything else is easier. Six. Okay, let's just make sure that I wound it. That's a wound. Okay. Knock one of those cards. Oh, draw a hit location. Uh, yep. I strike the magnificent furry tail. That's a wound and... Minus an evasion. Yeah, here's the important part. Because this starts affecting everything else. One negative evasion token on this creature. Okay. Okay, that was my full action. Uh, do you want to try to move around the butt? No, I don't want to get kicked. You still get the benefit from being in the blind spot, though. Fine. Okay. There you are. I'm using my two Katars. So Meaning they're paired, so you're rolling four dice. Four dice. Hitting on a six plus. Do you have any accuracy? No accuracy. No. Six plus because you're in the blind spot. Six plus. I do have two strength, which will make it easier. Okay. Seven, five, crit three. Just don't get a blind spot. Or two, so just don't get a blind spot. What do you mean? You're getting two hits. Right. You mean don't get a trap. Yeah. Okay. Restless rump and the pallet. Which one would you recommend I do first? Uh, odds are you're going to hit, right? Because so you got... Five, six, seven, eight. Three plus is going to be a wound. Hmm? 
Three plus is going to be a wound. How did you get that? Five. Strength of your weapon, strength of yourself. Yeah. And eight is what you're going up against. Okay, so three. Yeah, I would do the failure because your odds okay. are better. Six. Wound. Crushing it. It's going to be the easiest antelope fight you've okay. ever and then the seen. Rump. Still a wound, but read the reflex. Turn the monster to face away from the attacker. No, away from the attacker. Already there. Full move forward in a straight line. Cancel all hits now out of range. <laughs> we are trampled. When the monster collides with the survivor, they suffer damage equal to the monster's level to a random hit location. And collide still, I believe, has the terminology that knocks you down. I'll check that, Does though. It? Okay. Collide. If a monster moves through a space occupied by a survivor, they collide with survivors, suffers collision. If a monster ends a movement on a survivor, they suffer collision and knockback. Collision, we are knocked down. So we're knocked down and we take one damage to one location each. One to my chest. One to my head. One to your head. All right. Now we're knocked down. You okay. did that. I still have an action with Burgundy. Can you get there? Or do you want to take out the grass? I can get there. Cool. So I'm going to be attacking with Founding Stones in the blind spot, <laughs> but my Founding Stones are paired. Yeah. So I'm rolling four on a six plus. Okay. Let's see. Two. Two hits. Okay. These ones go back. One. Two. Now, Restless Muzzle and Restless Inner Thigh. Now, the problem with the uh, antelope here is I have a strength of one plus my founding stone with a strength of two. So I'm actually going to have to hit six. on a six plus. So starting with the blank one. Nine. I don't have any luck, do I? No. Wound. Okay. Now on the Restless Inner Thigh. Three's going to be a miss, so no wound resolve. Okay. That's fine. Okay, uh, I believe we are drawing for the creature. Yep. This is over here. Is this its regular? Here. This keep over here. We gotta remember. What? We haven't factored it in, that evasion. Hmm. You would have had one additional hit. What evasion? That oh. evasion. Yeah. You would have had one additional hit. Now, because he ran forward, We'll just say that it resolved and that hit canceled. Yeah. But going forward, remember, that is always added to modify our stats. Okay. Okay, go ahead and draw an AI. Chow, Chow down. down. There are no acanthus plants on the show board. Discard it and perform basic, but there are. Full move the screaming antelope to the closest acanthus. So. Two, three, four, five, six. Does it land on it? So I'm suffering. That's me. You're suffering. Knockback. And another trample. Mm. Okay. Random hit location. A hand. Okay. At least if it had to happen to someone, it's happening to Ash. Yeah. She's got like so much armor. Continue reading. Um, move it to the closest. If it ends its movement on or adjacent to the camp, this, it consumes it. Archive the terrain and perform a heal 1d5, which is... Heal 1d5. Move the top 1d5. So heal 1d5. Six. Three. Move three of those wounds. These? Back over into the deck. That's evil. Okay, and keep reading. No. Oh. Oh, and it goes to the bottom, actually. Move the top 1d5 cards from the wound deck to the bottom of the AI deck. Without looking at that, place chat on at the top of the monster AI deck instead of discarding it. The, the last three need to go to the bottom. One, two, three. Bottom. Now, Chow Dan's on the top, which you know what that means. Yes, we have to destroy it right now. <laughs> Wake me up. I need to get up. So, you just got... We got knocked down on our turn. So we Yeah, get, but I just got knocked back. You, you can't get re-knocked down, though. Okay. So, we both stand up again. I can't move. Let me try attacking it with... with Fist and tooth? With blue. No, with blue. This one? Yes, because then if I get it to run away from me, it'll run towards me. Okay. Oh, you want to go right in the front? Yeah. Okay. I want it to run backwards. Let's and try. And want... trample you again? No. That's what'll happen if it runs Why? backwards, because you're right in the line of trample. 
I needed to get back there. I hear what you're saying. Okay. I still like these lion guitar things. One, two, three, four. Hits. Um, so how does this evasion work? Just like if you had accuracy. So seven. So it's six. six. So I do get hits on six plus. Yep. What is that? Three hits? Nine. Nine. Dirty. Seven. Okay. Well, let's see. One. A delicate. Nope. Okay, you read. Start reading. Trap. We shuffle. Welcome to the trap cards. We shuffle the occasion deck. The screaming antelope panics. It's under mouth unleashing an inhuman oh. whale. It bucks wildly, leaps into the air. Look the at attacker. That under mouth. Oh wow. <laughs> Did you not notice that? No. <laughs> attacker is doomed. All survivors adjacent to the monster. Oh no. Suffer two brain damage per monster level. Knock back five oh, and are knocked yeah. down. Two brain damage. So I have zero now. Uh, I had none to begin with. <laughs> That's actually terrible. Amber. <laughs> That's horrible. No, that's bad. Is Amber dead? No. Amber's rolling on the chart, though. What does that mean? Major wound? I think Amber's rolling on the chart. Let me check this real quick. I just want to make sure that I do this right. Because we got that one checkbox, and then we're rolling on the disorder chart. What I want to make sure is that it's it's unlike so heavy wounds block going into a severe wound. I do not believe that uh, happens here with our mental block. Do I have to do it? No, because you have. I had two. I just take it down to zero. Yeah, and then you have one more beyond zero. Yeah. To check, but I do not. I don't believe. He is so much harder than our white lion. Brain. Uh, the brain is the survivor's location is different from hit locations. It represents the survivor's mental fitness. The brain can only be damaged by brain damage. Since the human mind is fragile, there is only one injury for the brain, indicated by the light-lined, unfiltered box. Okay. We are going to go ahead and roll on disorder. Roll. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Do you have a lifetime reroll? Do you have a lifetime reroll? You've used it. You're dead. No ifs, hands, or buts. I can't hear you. You're dead. I can't hear you. Do we lose the hunt? No. Huh? Do we lose the hunt? No. I just die. She had four strength. She didn't even do anything. <laughs> You're dead. Don't rip it. Don't, 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 don't. Bye bye, Amber. So long. That is how easy life can go. Do we still get to keep all the stuff she had? Oh, yeah. We go home with everything she had. Okay. You're dead. So sad. All right. Now what? Yeah, that stinks. You killed me. I did no such thing. You rolled the die. You murdered me. You rolled the die. You're a monster. All also, right. this die, you're going up here. <laughs> I am. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna attack the blind spot. Hang on. Wait. Hang on. Wait. Lands on its belly and begins to slide on its teeth. The, turn the monster directly away from the attacker. Full move forward in a straight line. <laughs> On its belly, sliding on its teeth, you take a random damage, and you're knocked down. On collision, non-deaf survivors gain one random disorder in addition. You're getting a disorder as well. 
Lucky me. Lucky you. Okay. Potion, a hand. I cannot get any more hands. What disorder would you like? None. Tell me now, tell me true, tell me kindly what ails Apparently you. Apparently the one that dropped. You want the one that dropped? Sure. You're now a rage a holic. Oh, that doesn't sound too bad. Your rage boils out of control, causing you to see red at the slightest provocation. Whenever you suffer a severe injury, also suffer the frenzy brain trauma. Wonderful. Okay. <sighs> okay. So now. Now you'll you'll go into its rear. Go into its butt. And attack it. Rolling four. Man, looking at Founding Stones, hitting on a 6+, plus, hitting on a 5+, plus because it's got minus 1 evasion. That is going to be 3 hits. Please draw up 3 cards for me. Now do you see why speed is sometimes not the best thing? Fur, fury Throat, Furry Throat, Restless Shank, and uh, Giant Mouth. Let's target the Furry Throat first. Need to hit on a, what is it? Six plus. Four is not going to do it. Restless Shank. Eight is going to do it. Please go ahead and kill one of those cards, which is going to be the one that allows it to feed. Roll 1d10 for each survivor currently in the monster's blind spot. On a result of a three plus, they are brutally back kicked and suffer three damage. Three damage to a random hit location and knocked back five. Three damage to the hand. Knocked back five. Guess who doesn't have hand armor? <laughs> you. Yep. Okay. How do we stand up? Well, we let the monster go. Don't like this monster. Random survivor in a blind spot. No one. A furthest threat in field of view in range. None of us are threats. No target. Graze. Going to move. Check its speed. Its speed is... Where do I see that? Zero. No. SPD. Sorry, not speed. Movement. MOV. Six. Okay. It cannot graze, correct? Nope. We all stand back. All right. You want me to go again? Sure. Okay. Die. This time, I'm going to attack it with fist and tooth. Rolling two. Why? Because I want the crit possibility. Okay. Rolling two, hitting on six plus. Didn't do anything. Okay, well you do something then. <laughs> five movement. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not close enough. Mm. This person, you go pick an enchantress plant. Go ahead and roll on that. What do I need for it? Roll a d10. Three. Find nothing, archive this terrain. Goodbye terrain, that's better than what he does. Yeah. Okay, drop for the uh, screaming antelope. You're gonna get kicked. Random survivor in range. Me. Could be either. Random, Random. evens, odds. Hmm. Intimidate target. The screaming handle begins to stomp and snort excitedly. Girl, 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 moan. Sounds from under its undermouth. Turn to face target, roll 1d10. On a result of 4 plus, the target suffers one brain. Damage per monster level one is knocked down. In addition, if the target is insane, they suffer knockback five. I have no brain damage. I will be getting an injury. Let's see. Four. Mm -hmm. Six. Okay, so you're suffering. So you check that box. You don't. You don't do it. You don't get an injury yet. And you're okay. also. What else? You're knocked down. Mm, no, if I was insane, um, I'm knocked down. If I was insane. Um, I would suffer knockback. Okay. Uh, our turn now. I'm gonna have you stand up. Okay. You wanna move around to the blind spot and attack it? 
cool. All right, guitars. Four hits on six pluses. Nope. Why? Keep doing the math. Six. I have sevens. And? Oh, five, because I'm in the blind spot. I was counting this evasion, not the blind spot. Yeah. Five pluses. Three hits. Three hits. Just don't pull the blind that killed us last time. One. Relentless muzzle. Two. Restless That's eye. My first strike. Okay. Well. So you have to target that one. All right. Um, three, four, five. Three plus. Three plus. Metal wound. Okay. Read through the card. The screaming antelope specifies glisten with human like fear. If the attacker is insane, I'm not. Cancel all hits and end their attack. Otherwise, the attacker suffers from brain damage. Take a brain damage. Oh, that's a problem. Yeah. That's a problem. Roll on the brain damage chart, please. Wait for me to turn to it. So that I can immediately die. Okay. Lunacy. Gain a, gain a random disorder in 1d5 insanity. Okay. 1d5. Roll, roll a d5. Nine. So four. Four insanity. That's nice. Seizures. Fabulous. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so I, have, I get four insanity? Do I un- Yeah, you uncheck the box. And add four? Yeah. Okay, well, at least for that. Seizures. Lingering damage from your head injuries has caused you to experience periods of uncontrollable shaking and absence of thought. During the showdown, whenever you suffer damage to your head, you are knocked down. All right. I don't like this. It's not permanent, is it? I don't know. During the showdown? Or during, the, during the showdown. Uh -huh. Seizures. Okay, and you have two more locations to target. Yeah. All right. Well, this one goes away. Which one should I do first? Whenever you suffer damage. Okay, well, uh, whichever one you want, you choose. Three uh, plus to wound. This. Okay. Nope. Man. This. Okay. Wound, no failure result. All right. My turn. Moving forward, more di more hits, or hmm? fine. I'll do founding stones. Four hitting on a six plus, five plus, three hits, please. You hate drawing these now. Don't I you? do. I have. I. I. I what do we have? What locations? Palette, chest, and flank. Failure, wound, reflex. Yeah. I got modifier of two on an eight, six plus. Let's start with, what does the reflex do? Monster turns to face you. Start with the reflex. You want to have the advantage of being in spine spot seven? Wound. It's going to turn to face me. Okay. Then let's do... Yeah. Let's do the wound one. One. What's the wound say? Turn the screaming antelope to face the attacker and full move forward in a straight line. Everyone's getting a damage. Um, whenever you suffer damage to your head. So I just can't okay. suffer head. So I take a damage to my chest. Um You take Head damage leads to knockdown. You wanna roll for me? Roll for, roll for blue. Blue takes a, no, sorry. It's not a. Blue takes a damage to the chest, and the other one takes a damage to the chest. Everyone's going for the chest. So, right wound there. My seizures, and then a chest over here. One. All right. And no one else can go, so go ahead and pull for the antelope. Random survivor and blind spot for this threat. No target graze. Go graze. We all take another wound. <laughs> Me, one to the chest. You, one to the foot. Last one, one to the head. 
But we all get to stand Zero up. Zero foot. Okay. <laughs> you want to go for the uh, butt again? No, I don't want to go for anything. Do it, hit the butt. Okay, who's there? You. We're, we're, it's, it's like we never got trampled. We just did, twice. No, she's never near. <laughs> okay, four. Hits on fives. Two, Two hits. Restless back and restless inner thigh. Go for it. Murder. Back first. Okay. Um, th I need hits on three. One. Wound. Beautiful. Wound. Ooh. We're so close. Does this take effect? <clears throat> yeah. Your attack disables monsters' powerful running muscles. The screaming antelope gets minus one movement. Nice. Okay. Okay. And on to me. Fist and tooth this time. Go for it. I think. How many do we got left? One. <sighs> Two more hits and it's dead. Yeah. We desperately need this. Founding stone. Two hitting on a five plus. Draw me two cards, please. As long as they're not traps. Gotta do Giant that. teeth are super, super dense. dense. The attacker hits this. Okay. If the attacker hits this location with a frail weapon, it is damaged. Archive the weapon at the end of this attack. No. Nope. Okay. All right. I'm going to start with super dense. Going to the restless seven. That is a wound. Go ahead and read the result. Your blow clips the screaming antelope shoulder. It jumps back. Turn to face the attacker. Then without turning, move the monster one space directly away from the attacker. Cancel. All hits now out of range. Okay. No. Cool. Could have been worse. <clears throat> you can move forward. One, two, four. Five. Can't reach it though. No. Okay. Uh, it does its basic action. Okay. Which is pick target. Um, closest knockdown survivor in range. No target. Grace. No one's knocked down. That's grazing. So it's um, going to turn around, move to that, eat that, heal one. Just one. Yep. Okay. Right. Isn't that what the graze says? Monster moves to its closest acanthus, ends its turn. If it's heal one wound, yeah. Okay. Two hits, Shira. Okay. Go get it. One, two, three, four. Kill the screaming donkey. <sighs> hits on fives. Two hits. Two hits. That's all we need. No, but I get the trap. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. All right, reshuffle. Okay, panics under mouth. Attacker's doomed. All survivors adjacent to it, which is just me now, suffer two brain damage per monster level. Knock back five and are knocked down. That's fine. But what else does it do? It slides on its belly. Lands on its belly, begins to slide on its teeth, turn the monster directly away from the attacker, full move forward in a straight line on collision. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep chasing after it. So Ash, with his very heavy weapon, is no use on this hunt. Well, here's the thing. Because it moves so I, much. But we need dash for you. Because your bone club, if you can use it, gets plus two hit for crits on, like, every location yeah so it's really great it's just very it's we need dash yeah we didn't have it because we took uh took surge yeah which right. we haven't been using actually we haven't had many opportunities but there's probably been a few opportunities where we could have sure. pick target random survivor and blind spot none furthest threat and field of view and range no one Me. Nope. okay okay What's it doing? Can it get to you? Was it close enough? Yeah. Um, move and attack. I forgot to do its movement. If target is a... It's okay. How far was it? it? I forgot to move it farther away before, and now it's fine. If a target is adjacent, turn monster so target is in its blind spot. Um, speed of four. Accuracy of two, damage two, and you have a destroyed hoof. All of those are hits. Body, body, head, head. Luckily with the head, I'm actually fine. I just go down to zero. 
Why? Well, body, three, body. Weren't you? Yeah, I forgot to add the uh, lion headdress. I know, I'm saying you, three minus two is. Three. Forgot to add the lion headdress, which makes it four. I'm saying, why'd you put it down to zero? You only got two. How much damage does he do? Two. Two per each? Yep. Okay, body is where I'm gonna have the issue. I need to spend a survival to dodge one of those. I cannot dodge the other. Open it up. Okay. Rolling on the body. What does this mean? If he had the destroyed hoof? If he had the destroyed hoof, he would not yeah. get us. Sadly, okay. we have not done that. No. We have not done that. There's been no destroyed hoofs. Yep. Four. Gaping chest wound. Suffer minus one permanent strength. This injury is permanent and can be recorded multiple times. Gain one bleeding token. Strength goes down to zero. Okay. I can go, though. You want to murder him? Yes. My bone club. What were you saying oh, about it? Fancy. Go ahead and go ahead and do it. And let's see what, see what you come up with. Four dice. No, not four dice. Two. It's a speed of two. Two. Six. So, the sixth is modified by my accuracy. Mm -hmm. Five. I'm not in its blind spot, but it has minus one. So, mm -hmm. four. Two hits. Okay. That's all we need. Okay. Restless shank and the pallet. So five plus two strength. I just need to get... Sadly, none of these have it. So a lot of these locations, say if you're hitting with a bone club, or you're hitting with a club or a shield, you get plus two luck. Okay. Which makes crits really, really easy. Okay. What are you, what are you hitting first? So I have to just get anything greater than one. That is true. I'll do the wound. Mm. Failure? Uh. Failure first? Okay, failure. Anything greater than one. That okay. wounds? Wounds. Now take the wound out, because then we murder him. Goodbye, angry donkey. <gasps> Dead. Dead. We did it! I feel like this is so anticlimactic, though. Because you lost Amber? I liked Amber so much. She had four freaking strength. Oh, so sad. Four. Yeah. Four. Okay. Life is hard. Yep. We get our death. We get our first death. We, it's a milestone. We do. It'll help the it'll help the tribe. Honestly, it's the first time we've had someone die. Why does it have to be her though? Okay. Uh, defeat. When the hunters know. Uh, rewards. Now we do have this upgraded to 1.6. So I have a sticker in here. Cool. Fancy sticker. The first time the screaming antelope is defeated, gain the stone circle settlement location. We have a brand new location with a lot of items that you can gain. Okay. When the monster is defeated, any non-deaf survivors with 20 plus insanity are driven mad by its scream, screaming death wail. They vanish into the darkness, never to oh be seen gosh. again. If you had 20 plus insanity, wow, you'd say goodbye. The group gains the following rewards: four basic and four screaming antelope. Okay. So, one, two, three, and four. You got a pelt. Shank bone. Breast steak. Best beast steak and a fat flat tooth. Monster organ. Some hide. And two bones. Okay. Alright, so let's shift all of this up a little bit. Can we punish that die up there? Yeah, that die's grounded. Oh, I can get bone earrings. <laughs> you already planning? You already going shopping? I might be. Okay. Uh, can you move that stuff off the yeah. trail? Uh, okay. Oh, let's update. So, start going through that. You want to bring out the other three of us back? Uh, no, it's fine. This one's dead. I know, but all we're doing is tracking this, okay. so you just need one. Okay, Set survivor up. returns. So everyone that made it back and survived, go ahead and uh, hit Hun XP. And if you had a weapon proficiency type, go ahead and take that. I did. You have guitars, so you have club and guitars, right? Yeah. Okay. Moving up, endeavors. We're going to gain three.
Why? Because only three people came home. Update the timeline. You want to pull the timeline around here? Okay, so checking the sheet. We just finished third. We're moving on to number four. Uh, you don't need to mark number four yet. No, I just marked number three. Oh, okay. We're coming home now. Finish three. Yep. Uh, First we... time death is. We need a death principle. Principle of death? Well, I think we check that a little bit later. So we're updating the timeline. Have you updated our... Um, the number of people we have. So cross out. Who died? Oh, I think we should be. Huh? Prologue was year one or zero? Prologue. Well, we did returning survivors year one. Okay. Prologue, White Lion, and the Screams. We're on the right track. Okay. Yeah. Screaming Antelope. Okay. One. Moving on down. Make sure you mark that Amber died and update our total population down to 16. <clears throat> Amber? Or do you write death? Well, you can mark that and then just uh, hit the box next to Amber showing that she's dead. Okay. Okay. Uh, continuing going down. Update timeline. Update death count check for milestone and story event. So, milestone, we're going to have to resolve. I believe we do story event first, though. Okay. This is not another marathon. Top one. Stranger in the dark. Roll 1d10. Five. The stranger is dressed in a black ragged cloak that obscures its form. A myriad of strange lanterns hang from chains wrapped around its body. The stranger speaks in a dark raspy tone. I am the lamplighter. Give me your light. Each player nominates a different survivor to bring him a lantern and rolls 1d10. Oh no. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Bring our survivors over. Go. Uh, who am I willing to nominate? Everyone has to... To the dead people. To the people we don't care about? Yeah. You think we can get good things or no? You don't have to read ahead, by the way. You might not want to. Some and some. I know. It's usually like that. So, let's do one bad person, one good person. Okay. So, Bark and Shadow. Okay. Is that each player, right? Yeah. Okay. I do need to check the rules. If you know down below... Whether player refers to four characters or, or literally two, two, players. two players or one player. With the marathon, because there was a first, second, third, and fourth place, we did nominate four survivors. But, but with this, I think we're going to do two. two because, yeah, we'll see. Okay, we'll start with Shadow. Shadow first. <sighs> That's probably good. Then the dead character. What is it? <laughs> The stranger returns a lantern to the survivors, glowing with a beautiful orange light that adds sparkles to their eyes. They gain one courage and one permanent strength. Oh, great! <laughs> great! They can't take courage. <laughs> they got two strength, though. Super strong, but they can't do anything with bark. Let's do bark. So what's going to happen now? You know what's going to happen now? We <laughs> got a really low number. Two. Yeah. <laughs> The stranger holds its lantern up to the survivor's face, and shine the shine fades from their eyes. When the lamplighter leaves, the survivor is found dead. No! Wow, I didn't read that far ahead. No! I can't believe you ripped him up. Don't rip him. It's not what we're doing to our dead people. You can tape him later. Please update our timeline to include that Bark has also died, and we only now have 15 people. Do you see how easy this can happen? Yeah. Do you see how death permeates this game? Yeah. Glad you're having fun. Because some of us keep having our best characters die. Two of them in one episode. Two of my favorite characters in one episode. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Mark. Okay. Let's update the death count. Let's do that. <laughs> How about that? That sounds fun. Should we go for intimacy then? Because we're dying. 
I mean, we got 15 people. We're not. We're, we're doing okay. We'll see. Intimacy is also dangerous for us, by the way, because the thing you chose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Principal death. The group must decide what to do with their first survivor corpse. First harvest or the first grave. Am I choosing? Oh, yes. Harvest. Oh, you didn't even think about it much. Harvest? Yeah. Okay. Our friends are very edible. Here's our card. Cannibalize. <sighs> Survival limit <laughs> increases by one. Okay. You want to okay. update that? Go ahead and update your charts. The settlement decides to harvest the body for resources. The settlement gains the death principle cannibalize. Find and place a card on the settlement board and note it on the settlement record sheet. After adding the card to the settlement... Finish reading cannibalize. Roll 1d10. Survival limit goes with plus one. I did. Okay. Whenever a survivor dies, draw one basic resource and add it to the settlement storage. Do not gain a resource if your survivor is lost, ceases to exist, or is exiled. Resource that we gained, we gained a skull from both we, two people. <laughs> Skull and random resources. Lucky us. Look, it's a rich season. <laughs> it's a good season for it. Yeah. So happy. We all are happy. We've accepted the darkness. Can't believe you ripped up bark. Yeah, that's what you're concerned about? Yeah. Okay. Poor bark. All right. Bark is dead. You roll 1d10, please. Don't want to. Six, nominate a survivor. The survivor frantically tears the corpse open and deeply drinks its blood. They decide that for every new creature they eat, they will become stronger. The survivor gains plus one permanent speed. Would you like to add it to one of your other survivors? I would. Add it to Burgundy or anyone else who's living? I'm adding it to Burgundy. I take Amber, because Amber's also dead. <laughs> Give back Amber. Bye-bye, Amber. Bye Maybe bye. Spark is the hope I need. I'm going to name a new one. Can I have a new new character sheet, please? Sure. Because in, in memory of Amber. What are you doing, a male or a female? I'm doing a male. We only have one more male left to name. Everyone else is female. What are you naming him? Spark? Yellow. What? Memory of Amber. Okay. One strength, one evasion, one speed, one survival, because he just got named. He We're also, feeling good about He also this. has encourage and surge. Encourage and surge. He is going to be my bowman okay. in memory of Amber. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving forward, what were we doing now? We were... <laughs> oh, we're on the develop phase. Yeah. So. I cannot believe you died. Wow. I mean, you were having fun with it while it was happening. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you can believe it. I cannot believe it. Pretty wow. sure you... I'm, I'm pretty sure I heard wow. you... I heard you believing it. I mean, I saw the words before, and then I was like, oh, Jesse's not going to be happy. I mean, I heard you believe it. Okay, so the question is, what do we want to go for now? Let's go ahead and finish out my rawhide set. Yeah. So I need a pair need? of pants, please. What do you need for it? Uh, it's just going to be a piece of leather, a piece of hide. There you go. Okay, what else do we think we need? So I have my guy that's ambidextrous, which might be cool to get two weapons specifically for him. Instead of the founding stones, because they don't do that well. Ooh. Ambidextrous, is that the one that you... He can use both. Mm. So it could be very cool to have, like, like for instance, if we were able to get some bone axes, he would roll four on a six plus mm -hmm. for three damage, which is the same as your lion katars, I believe. Mm -hmm. No, it's a little bit better than your yeah. lion katars. Anything else faster than that? No, I would love a guy that's wearing that has double axes. Okay, in memory of, in memory of Amber. 
I mean, I mean, are we just buying everything in memory of Amber right now? Yeah. In order do to need? do that, I would need two bones and two organs. Do we have that? There you go. We do. Do we have an organ, hide, and bone left? Organ, hide, and bone. Yep. So we could do that and innovate? Yep. How do you feel about that? Double sure. axe guy? No. Sounds cool to me. Mm -hmm. Anything you want? My earrings? How? What do the earrings cost? They're over there. And you also, they're in the... Shank uh, bone. No, we don't have a shank bone. I could trade this out. <coughs> and what? And another bone. I do. I can get my earrings. Can you? Okay. Do you even know what the earrings do? No. <laughs> You're just like, yeah, I'll take those. Let's see. Bone earrings, that's what it is? Yeah. The start of the showdown, gain plus two speed and plus two strength tokens. If insane and all gear in your gear grid has the bone keyword. So, you have to... Cannot wear it with him. You you would have to create something specifically for it. Maybe not then. It's up to you. I mean, you could have a survivor that you use it for, but they would have to have, like, the skull helm, this bone, these bone earrings. Like, that's what they're going for. Fine. <coughs> no. What else just needs bones? Uh, some weapons and stuff. Bone darts, bone club, bone dagger, bone blade. Is there anything with the red on top? Bone dagger would have the red on top. Do yeah, you need red on top for something? Um, but I would also need a red on the side. Why? If this has a red, I can do that. It wouldn't give you anything, though. Okay. Daggers are also ranged, which isn't a terrible thing to have. You can get a pair of bone daggers for your guy that can't... You can get another weapon for your guy that can't, can't move go anywhere. much. Okay. Do you want them in range, or you want, you want like, uh... Yeah, let's do range, because if I'm close enough to use my bone club, I will. You'll use it. So, darts or daggers? Which one? These darts. Daggers not ranged. We can get two of them. Probably only need one. We can also save things. So, if we save, like, the large flat tooth or the shank bone... Um, large flat tooth. Hey, did you do this? When you gain this? You gain survivor. We didn't. Um, you could give it to your person that needs Both needs of these. it. So give them give them to your Any person that needs it. Yeah. <coughs> okay. I'm giving it to him. Okay. You want to just save an extra Bow? resource? Sure. sure. So, I'd save... I'd go ahead and save the large flat tooth. So, go ahead and write that down. And then you've had three pulled to the side for our innovation, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go ahead and innovate. Spending those three. I'm trying to find where I had the other one pulled to the side. Is it one of these? Shank bone? Hang on, what did you need? Uh, bone, bone organ, bone organ. Bone organ, bone organ, yeah, okay. Saving the large flat tooth. Hide, organ, bone, saving the large flat tooth. You wrote it down? No, I will. All right, innovation. Where let's hope we get dash. Where does it go? Under... Resource area. Under bone? Yep. Here. Large, flat. Let's hope we get dash so that... We don't have that type of lock. We can move. And one more. Bloodletting or shrine. Maybe used once per settlement phase. Armor ritual. Departing survivors gain plus one insanity. Final adjustments. Departing survivors gain one armor to all hit locations. Ooh, I like that one. Or bloodletting. Uh, breathing a vein. Spend one resource and roll 1d10. Gain one understanding. Lose all survival. You cannot gain survival at the settlement phase for any reason. Secroscope. Gain three insanity. Or cured. Gain six insanity. You may remove one of the following. A disorder of your choice, warped pelvis, or intestinal prolapse. We don't have any of those. So shrine, you think? I think. Okay. We will establish shrine. That is something we can now do. Where does it go? She goes up here into our innovations. Can write okay. it under our innovation deck. Shrine. <coughs> yep. And what does it give us? It just gives us something we can do. It's an action we can take now. Can I see it? 
Oh, we have to roll. Yep. Let me add shrine consequences. <gasps> All right. When do we get to try for family and breed? So I don't think we're going to do that this time. Why? I'll tell you because I just made yellow, and I take yellow out on a hunt. But we have someone who is two years older than yellow. So we could spend the next two to go ahead and get yellow to age up. Uh. Make sense? I guess. <laughs> you, you keep killing your survivors. I want to get more of them. This is how you lose. We're at 15. We're okay for now. Yeah, the next we'll need one to breed soon. One. So aging, which means I can get a buff, which means there's, I'm more likely to stay alive. That didn't work last time. You did this last time. I really liked my person, though. You did this last time. You spent our... our. I'm vetoing you. Next one. You cannot spend asterisks to aid your people that you kill. I don't kill them. You do. No. Your two died. Eight. Which one was high? Which one was low? And six. Doesn't matter. You're adding these. So we're looking at 14. One random fighting art. I don't like fighting arts. They don't help me as much as you'd assume. See? We got the stone circle. No, it's a disorder. Fighting art. Monster Claw style. Your fist and tooth attacks gain plus one accuracy, plus one strength, and savage. Maybe I'm going fist and tooth. Cool. Monster Claw style. I think I just found my Fist and Tooth person. Fist and Tooth gain plus one accuracy. So, FT. Plus one A. Plus one S. And Savage. Beautiful. We're going to go ahead and establish you as Fist and Tooth. Better get a lot of armor on him. No, not I. Not I. Never been one for clothing, honestly. And I think that's just about it. We have one more hunt. And then we get the butcher. Before we move to a nemesis showdown, which will happen right there. Prepare departing survivor. So, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this gameplay versus the antelope. We're going to go on one more hunt, either against the antelope or the white lion, which means it will be over on Patreon. It's going to be a Patreon exclusive one, unless for some reason we fight a level two of any of them. Uh, and then you'll see us back here on the channel for the butcher, which should be... If you thought this one was bad. Either way. Bye.